Hi everyone, my name is Rebecca, I'm a fish biologist, an ichthyologist and also a PhD student specialising and studying a lower card catfishes and looking at their evolution. So today's video is very relevant to lower cards because it is uh, what gets recorded as making up the majority of most of the species uh, diets other than algae. So not all feed on this and exactly what it is is a little bit more difficult to say. So detritus you might see listed as different things and it might also be labelled as mole which kind of makes it even more confusing because the literature also is a little bit confusing on what actually makes up detritus and uh, the different types of detritus. So detritus almost is just stuff. It can be decaying um, matter it usually will come with, if it is a decaying matter or even a whole host of diff different um, sort of, um, what's it, like structures, and it will likely come with a whole host of different microbes uh, from protozoa to algae and also bacteria, archaea, so a wide diversity of different things. Um, and then there's also going to be detritus that is almost inorganic or gonna have um it's not actually decaying matter so much it's just i guess waste products and it's so difficult to define what actually is detritus there's detritus that's listed as more plant matter and then more animal matter what's defined as a plant and an animal is a little bit more vague when we're looking at this because i'll be including algae as plants because algae is also um, it's a very polyphyletic group, it um, appears in bacteria, it's also different protozoa and then some are the green algae in particular, I think is it chlorophyta, is most closely related to uh, plants, like modern plants and I think a lot of, um, like quite a few like well-known algae is placed within that kind of group but there's still a wide diversity of different algae and then when it comes to bat, um, when it comes to animals, where do you place bryozoa and maybe sponges? And that's where periplankton probably comes in a lot more. So, and then what about the ones that aren't either animals or plants in those taxonomic categories? So, protozoa, bacteria, archaea. Um, it makes it a little bit more confusing, but often you'll see in a literature, especially regarding diets, you just see the word detritus, and it's very difficult to work out what is actually making up that detritus. When they mention fine detritus, I have seen references suggesting that it does refer to something that's, um, I guess, some kind of silt, but often it has filamentous, filamentous algae attached to it. So... It does make um, detritus of it and mulm, I guess, therefore, a very vast thing and it's the fact that it is just stuff because there's so many different definitions and types. Um, it is kind of just really vague and therefore what is it? It could be anything really and that is a little bit annoying when it comes to different aspects of uh, the aquarium hobby, um, aquariums in general and then we also have to think about um, other aspects of where we might call things mulm or detritus in the hobby and this might be a variety of different, um, what's it like, structures would be the best word so we've got um, in the filter you might have um, a variety of different, um, like you've got waste, just direct waste from the fish that is a type of detritus and then you've also got um, like biofilms that's going to be in the filter too and you're also going to have biofilms in the tank all tanks will have some kind of sheen on them it's really difficult to see in the tank like this um, apart from that some of these wood branches do get occasional quite reasonable ones I guess and they do vary depending obviously on the organisms present or what's actually forming that detritus therefore periplankton therefore biofilms but in a way actually referring to periplankton referring to biofilms is a lot more specific about what you mean because when you mean biofilm or periplankton you mean 
like or all fruit it is almost like a bacterial microbial a heterotrophic and autotrophic community because it does contain algae and the colours are brown tinge or greenish tinge could tint algae um, and brownish could tint bacteria and protozoa it really depends um, so it is quite a diverse set of different things to trace and then we also have direct fish waste in the tank itself and maybe decaying food so it is really vast and therefore because we're not referring to one in particular thing in the aquarium hobby you can't say tritus mulm is good the tritus mulm is bad because it depends what you're defining as that topic and also what um fish you've actually got and what fish you're keeping because different fishes and different organisms benefit off different aspects of it and whether they do at all. So the main one is diet. So log cards do feed, the majority are either algivores or detritivores, which makes up a large majority of um, their diets in the wild and also nutrients. Um, this, so the actual term detritivore is really vague and it is split into those two categories often, animal detritus or plant detritus. And that plant detritus is mostly um, going to be those photosynthetic organisms, probably with bacteria as well, and different filter feeders. But the stuff you're actually keeping in your tank, I probably wouldn't treat as that they're going to eat a lot of the, if you're having a build up of um, just stuff in the tank, that's not going to probably have that nutrition that what, it doesn't really match with what that the literature will say or mean by detritus in the fish's gut and what the fish is actually digesting. It's most likely what they're meaning is that that detritus is unidentified organisms growing on the surface periplankton. So what they're really eating a lot of them is different types of periplankton, I guess, different organisms in the um, water. So definitely I wouldn't treat it as a diet in that case. Um, the, there are a few organisms I think that would benefit, potentially shrimp. Um, any filter feeders, so fan shrimp, would benefit off something where they can constantly pick at small amounts of bacteria that are growing in detritus. Um, just bear in mind that um, like they are smaller organisms than a whole lower carrot that's going to be feeding a lot more constantly so they're not going to need as much and also snails but it's so because it is such a vague word in a way that it could mean a lot of things and as a diet, I think really looking at specifically what the fish eats, don't just think of detritus itself as they eat waste because they don't really eat waste. It's just a term for different organisms in this sort of case. And therefore also I'm going to probably, I think the important thing here also when we talk about detritus or malt is decomposition. The benefit towards the diet of like shrimp and the small filter organ well not all shrimp filter but I mean like the way they pick at the food and then also therefore some fishes that my, I found that particularly with gymnotiforms they're very slow to feed you kind of need that level of um, detritus because otherwise you're feeding so much food that you're just going to end up with it and it is managing that and it's also a food for their what they eat and these are gymnotiforms such as um, a lot of those with the tubular mouths are a little bit more challenging to actually um, feed and keep in captivity um, and they're also quite a few more is as well but decomposition is quite a complicated process in a way because it does involve so many different organisms um, decomposition is just the breakdown of matter. So this could be fish waste, this could be um, uneaten uh, food, undigested food, so that's more fish waste as well, I guess. But bear in mind that decomposition, it varies depending on the actual conditions. 
So, um, an anaerobic um, system is going to be very different in the gases and compounds produced to aerobic. But bear in mind, because they're decomposing, they're also going to be respiring in some matter, and that's why that anaerobic aerobic is important. They're likely going to be producing ammonia, CO2, um, methane potentially, phosphate, and therefore it gets a little bit more unpredictable. And you do see those gas pockets where places are left to sort of fester. And therefore detritus is just such a complicated thing when it comes to the aquarium. The benefit depends on what you're talking about and therefore the negatives. Does that mean that there's a benefit to having sil well detritus building up in your fish tank? Probably not so much unless you're keeping certain groups of fishes, certain groups of invertebrates um, and also keep a very good eye on those parameters because you have got a whole other sort of more um, so processes happening such as that decomposition occurring and kind of therefore I would really think about it I when it comes to filtration I think it's very important to actually shift that detritus growing so sort of building up in the filter because filters are also all filter most filters like very rarely do you get a filter that is not um, mechanically filter, filtering out uh, fish waste, uh, detritus, silt, whatever, just anything solid and therefore that's going to be building up in the tank and just because it's there it doesn't mean it's got a benefit, it probably, it, the bacterial levels will vary and the type of bacteria will vary but generally for nitrifying bacteria because nitrification runs on um, what's the word, oxygen, it's oxidation, you're going from um, ammonia, adding in oxygen for nitrates, nitrites, and then adding more oxygen for nitrates, you do want that constant supply of not just nutrients, but you want the constant supply of oxygen. And detritus building up, or filter that's not cleaned, um, is going to be blocking that sort of access for nutrients and oxygen to actually reach the bacteria and also the archaea so it's not just um, bacteria that are involved with nitrification and therefore it's really important and if you're not if you're only going to think of nitrification then it may well I mean like denitrification is the other one and that is an anaerobic process and that's converting, um, that's a really complicated and whole other complicated process with a lot more compounds. Variety of them are toxic, but it's converting um, nitrates to, um, what's it, nitro N2, nitrogen gas. So it's making it a little bit more, what, like, it's making it a little bit more unpredictable and the actual spaces between the two is there going to be um, less sort of um, sort of areas for that nitrifying bacteria is kind of a little bit more adding a lot more complexity to the actual setup and also you've got to think that those uh, denitrifying uh, microbes do need a source of that nutrients themselves so of that um, what was it nitrates so generally clearing that um, detritus in a filter is brilliant. It doesn't have to be some sort of vigorous scrubbing, just shifting all of that solid waste out. I just uh, do it till sort of like, I might do it in a bucket of um, aquarium tank water or dechlorinated water, depends um, like at the time. Or our, um, while I'm water changer, I do it actually in the water that's being drained out of the out of the tank. So there's multiple ways to do it, and it's not that difficult. Um, some are a lot easier than others. And another aspect of this detritus is also look at filter floss, because um, filter floss does build up um, a lot of detritus, and that's going to be stuff that you probably want to shift because it's going to go 
be blocking a lot more of that uh, flow to the filter. So anyway, I'm going to end this video here. It just gives some ideas or thoughts about detritus because it is such a big topic with the fact that there's no clear definition of what it is. It's, well, so much in the hobby anyway. And also in the science because I'm reading so many papers and it just lists diets as detritus which could be, it could be anything. So anyway, if you like my videos please comment, like and subscribe and thank you for watching.